Ahoy there, Captain Benzie here, coming at you with another episode of the Cat Skull Academy, the series that aims to give you the best start possible in EVE Echoes. Today we're going to be covering everything you need to know about cannons. We'll have a look at the different types of cannons and what differentiates them from other weapon systems. We'll then cover gyro stabilizers and talk about what they are and what they do, before going on to the best starting ships for a budding cannon pilot. From there we'll have a look at progression, both in terms of small cannons and medium cannons, the ships that you'll progress up through, and the skills that you'll need in order to fly them. Finally, at the end of all that, we'll have a quick little rant from me about why the Rifter sucks, and how hopefully it can be fixed in future. Now if you do enjoy this video or find it useful, let me know by hitting like on it, subscribe to the channel for all things Eve Echoes, and ding that notification bell so that you know when the next video goes live. Let me know down below in the comments section what topics you want me to cover in future videos, and come find me on social media as well, including the Cat Skull Academy Discord. If you do want to go the extra mile to help support this channel, you can do so on Patreon, and if you are looking to see if you can join the Catskull Cartel Corporation in-game, then come find us on the Catskull Cartel uh, Discord down below in the comment section. Make an application there. We are still looking for new people, but we don't accept random requests in-game. You do need to apply on Discord. All that said and done, let's talk about cannons. Like most other weapon systems in EVE Echoes, cannons come in two different range varieties. You have the short-ranged autocannon and the long-ranged strike cannon. Now, if you've been watching my videos back in the open beta test, you may see these sometimes referred to as howitzers. Howitzers is the name for a long-ranged cannon in EVE Online, though in EVE Echoes, they changed that to strike cannon to help streamline the naming convention. It's obvious on, at first glance that a autocannon and a strike cannon are both cannons, so it kind of ties them in a little bit better than autocannon and howitzer. Now if we have a look at the actual profile of a cannon just to see what differentiates this from other weapon systems, you can see immediately that the damage profile is spread across three types. You've got predominantly explosive and thermal with a little bit of kinetic in the mix there as well. This means that whilst cannons still hit shields for a decent amount of damage thanks to that thermal, they are better against armor, which tends to have lower resistances to both explosive and to kinetic. So if you're using cannons, do be aware you are likely to do more damage against armor tanked ships. Now you'll notice here that unlike lasers and unlike railguns, there is no activation cost from the power grid. You can be down at you can be neutralized all the way down to zero capacitor and your cannons will still fire. They don't require any form of capacitor, which is one of the big advantages of cannons. And if we look at their optimal range and accuracy fall off, you can see that cannons typically have a short optimal range, but with a long, gradual accuracy fall off. In this case, this Mark III small autocannon has an optimal range of 1.2 kilometers with an accuracy fall off of 5.16. That means you're 100% effective at 1.2, and that gradually decreases to 50% by the time you hit about 6.3 kilometers. Add an additional 5.16, so that's about 11.4, um, 11.5 kilometers, you'll find that you are now finally reaching that zero. So even the auto cannons here can actually hit from 11 kilometers. They are a decent range, but it's just got that very slow, gradual drop off. Now, auto cannons being the short range variation, you can see also have a fast activation time of four seconds um, and a very fast tracking speed of 410. These are great for getting up close and personal. They fire very rapidly and they can turn to face their target quickly. Now, on the other end of the spectrum, we have the strike cannons. Same damage profile, predominantly in explosive and thermal with a little bit of kinetic in the middle there. Again, you'll see that there is absolutely nothing in the way of uh, capacitor requirement here, capacitor cost for activation cost, um, and it, but they do have a very heavy power grid requirement. Small strike cannons, for some reason, have more power grid requirement than almost any other weapon system. They are hungry, hungry hippos, and you really sometimes have to rig for that, as you'll have seen in my Thrasher videos. Now, if we have a look a little bit further down here, you can see that the optimal range of a strike cannon starts at 8.05 kilometers with an accuracy fall off of 8.75. That means 8.05 for 100% effectiveness and then a gradual decrease down to 50% by time you hit 16.8 kilometers. An additional 8 on top of that to 24 point, well, it's over 24, it's about 25 kilometers at that point, is where eventually you hit the zero. 25 kilometer range on these things um, is pretty impressive. They are a lot slower to fire, 8.5 seconds activation time, and that tracking speed of 109 is a lot lower as well. 
Like other weapon systems, cannons do have a low slot weapon upgrade module. Now for cannons, this is the gyro stabilizer. What these do is when you fit them to your ship, you get a flat damage bonus of 5% with an activation time adjustment there of minus 3.25%. It means your cannons fire slightly faster and deal slightly more damage, which gives a fairly significant increase to DPS damage per second. On top of that as well, you can activate the gyro stabilizer, make it hot, which then will increase the damage bonus instead to 6.49% and a 400% activation time adjustment. That means that you go, you you fire a lot faster and you are dealing more damage with that gyro stabilizer active. Now these ultimately it's got an activation time here of 20 seconds and then a reactivation delay of 60 seconds. So once you activate this it applies for 20 seconds that additional damage bonus there the 6.49 and the 400%. Once that has then finished once those 20 seconds have elapsed this goes on to cooldown and it drops back down to the standard 5% damage with the 3.25 activation time adjustment reduction there. Now ultimately that then lasts for 60 seconds before the gyro stabilizer is ready to use again so you can activate this for a little punch of extra damage now to showcase what this does on the cold fitting here you can see 62.03 percent is my standard dps here on this rifter if i were to fit the mark 3 gy uh, gyro stabilizer that immediately increases up to 66.2 and if i undock and activate this that will go up that little bit higher again as it's heated and does extra damage to the uh, puts extra damage into the cannons now, cannons as a weapon type are, of course, mainly found in the Minmatar Republic ship tree. This is where you're going to go if you are a budding cannon pilot. Now, if you've started off with the Minmatar, obviously you've started with a Reaper and probably upgraded already into a Slasher. Now, unlike some of the other empires here, there's not really much you can do from this point. You can see here that the Slasher itself for Frigate Command gives you a bonus of small cannon tracking speed and small cannon damage. Now, the alternative at tech level 2 is the Rifter, and even though I started this video in a Rifter, just because it's one of the most recognisable cannon ships in EVE, ultimately this is a terrible ship and there is no point side grading into this thing. Stick with the Slasher. If you go into the Rifter, you lose a mid slot, you lose a load of the extra bonuses, and you don't actually gain anything except for a little bit of overall defense. But the reduction to your flight velocity actually means that you take more damage in a Rifter than you would in a Slasher. As such, stick with the Slasher as you're going through Tech 2. Now, once you hit Tech 3, things don't really pick up for you as a cannon pilot, unfortunately, especially if you're into frigates. You have an option of the Probe, which gets no damage bonuses whatsoever, or the Breacher, which is very much a missile ship. So where do you go from here? Well, actually, you sidestep then into Destroyers and you look to upgrade to the Thrasher. Now, I'm not going to go too deep into the Thrasher here, um, as I have done a video entirely on how much I love Thrashers and how absolutely amazing a line of ship these are. But ultimately, the main reason that you upgrade into a Thrasher is because you get that third additional high slot, which means you're immediately hitting three turrets. That's 50% extra DPS over the Slasher. It then gets the 25% small cannon optimal range and 7.5% small cannon damage for each level that you have in small cannon operation. Now, every pilot starting in the game has small cannon operation at level 2 already, meaning an additional 15% damage right off the bat. And if you train that all the way up to skill level 5, then you get an additional 37.5% small cannon damage on the Thrasher. From there, you can either go up the Thrasher line, as shown in the Thrasher video with the Thrasher 2, excellent ship, I've used these for an awful long time, and then finally up to the Thrasher Fleet issue, when I find the right one. There it is there, the Thrasher Fleet issue. Now I'm actually soloing tier 7 anomalies in this thing comfortably. I can theoretically do tier 8 small, but I do struggle those and I have to warp in and out quite a bit. But tier 7 anomalies in a tech level 5 destroyer is definitely a way to go. Also, I have got a video coming out very soon on the uh, the Tech Level 4 uh, Interceptor Frigates, which of course includes the Slasher 2. For me, actually, this is one of the most amazing ships for cannons in the game until you hit Tech Level 6. This thing is absolutely insane. Yeah, okay, it's only got two high slots, but you do get bonuses down here. 12% small cannon damage at full 5 Frigate Command. That is a 60% increase to small cannon damage, meaning that those two act better than if they were uh, just three slots. 
You then have small cannon tracking speed, and um, it just means that they target onto your opponent that little bit better as well. And with the afterburner velocity bonus and the flight velocity of 476 meters per second, this is an excellent speed tank that again can comfortably solo tier 7 anomalies. And that video uh, about the Tech 4 interceptors will showcase how that's done. The Slasher 2 is ultimately one of those ships that I do strongly recommend cannon pilots getting into, especially if they look to progress in small cannons. But whether you go for the Slasher 2 or whether you go through the Thrasher line of ships is entirely up to you, and then it does depend whether or not you're going to train into Frigate Command or whether you go into things like Destroyer Command and then up from there. It's a bit of a dry spell for frigates afterwards. Tech level 5 doesn't have any cannon frigates, nor does tech level 6. And in fact, tech level 6 for destroyers has nothing for cannons either. You have the Thrasher fleet issue at tech level 5, and then nothing again in the destroyers until tech level 10, which is just insane. Thrasher Covert Ops is an absolutely disgusting ship though, but obviously it's a long way out. It's about a year away for most people who have just started playing. In the frigate line of things, again, tech level 7 still has nothing, and it's only tech level 8 that actually gives you another cannon ship. There is a daft of cannon ships available to the budding pilot, but fortunately, as I said, it is an absolute bonus then that the Slasher 2 is such an incredibly powerful ship, as is the Thrasher fleet issue. Both of these can solo tech 7 anomalies on their own, and so you don't really need to upgrade once you've hit that point. If you like cannons and you like small cannons, the Slasher 2 and the Thrasher Fleet issue are going to keep you going for an awful long time. There is obviously one ship we can talk about in regards to upgrading, and that is the Angel Cartel Drumiel. Now this thing, three high slots, but with the bonuses that it gets here, small cannon damage plus 10% per level of advanced small cannon operation, means that those three actually act as if they're basically five turrets, and that is a huge amount of damage for an incredibly fast moving ship. Again, the Dramiel is one of those ships that I have covered in more detail elsewhere. I'll put a link at the top of the screen now and in the description below to help you find that particular video if the Dramiel sounds like your kind of thing. If you enjoy the Slasher 2's playstyle of just never getting hit and slowly whittling your opponent down with small cannons, then the Dramiel is absolutely the ship for you. It is an absolutely evil ship in the right hands. But what if it's not just small cannons that you're interested in? Well, obviously you have to start with small cannons, at which point I would recommend going with either the Slasher 2 or the Thrasher, preferably the Slasher 2, simply because it allows you to just focus on uh, some very basic skills there. Frigate Command doesn't take a lot to train up, and you're not going to train Frigate Command and then go into uh, the, 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 the Thrasher line of things and start training Destroyer Command and small cannons, because you don't want Destroyer Command and small cannons if you're going up into the medium cannons. Here, all you have to worry about is training Frigate Command and possibly Afterburner Bonus as well. Afterburner Bonus does affect any medium-sized ship as well, so it is a ship. Uh, it is a skill worth using. Obviously, Frigate Command only affects the Slasher too, but it is a cheap skill, so we don't really lose much by training it. Now, once you hit Tech Level Five, eventually you can go into something like the Stabber Trainer. Again, <laughs> I've got a video on this. The Stabber Trainer video will teach you everything you need to know about the Stabber line of ships and how to use them and how to upgrade from there. Of course, you've got the Stabber Trainer, then the Stabber, and as we go a little bit further up, you get to the Stabber Fleet issue, which is an absolute monster in regards to medium cannons, before eventually coming up finally to things like the Stabber Sniper, which can hit things from a horrific distance away from massive damage. That video as well also talks about possibly upgrading into the Hurricane once you hit tech level 7 and eventually up into the full Hurricane mainline itself. That is one of the most powerful medium cannon ships you will find in the game. Of course as well it would be remiss to not mention the Rupture Trainer and of course the Rupture itself. These are some of the tankiest medium cannon ships in the entire game. These things can take one heck of a beating and with four high slots uh, equipped for um, medium turrets you can actually do quite a lot of damage back. It's not much in the way of skills on there, the rupture is more in the way of tanking the damage rather than dishing it out. The dishing it out is very much the remit of the Stabber Fleet issue. So again, watch the Stabber, uh, Stabber Trainer uh, episode, that will cover everything you need to learn there about the Stabber, the Rupture and the Hurricane. Finally as well, it is worth mentioning back in the Angel Cartel tree, if you do like your medium ships, the Cinnable is an absolute nightmare. This thing is a fast moving ship, I mean heck if we look into its attributes and fittings, flight velocity of 292 and a warp speed of 3 and it gets bonuses to those. 
and ultimately this is an incredibly speedy cruiser. Again, if we look at the stats here, you can see that extra warp speed and warp acceleration means it can reposition quickly. Extra cannon damage all over the place there with five high slot fittings there. Five cannons, each of which are doing extra damage thanks to advanced medium cannon operation. Just means this thing packs one heck of a wallop. And it's ultimately one of the end game ships you should consider if medium cannons are your thing. I'd either look at the Cinnable or the Hurricane. Those of you who have followed this channel for a while know that I try to approach everything in as positive and productive a manner as possible, as I believe that the world at large and the internet in general is negative enough without me adding more to it. Now, of course, I don't ignore that there are sometimes problems that need addressing, I just try to approach them in as constructive a manner as I can. So, netties, I hope you're listening about the Rifter. Now, in EVE Online, the Rifter is a fantastically versatile ship. It's cheap, it can be outfitted in loads of different ways to do all kinds of crazy different things. Obviously, it is still limited, it's only a, t it's only a basic level frigate, but at least it has uses. Here in EVE Echoes, however, it literally has none. Now, it's a Tech 2 frigate. You ultimately get the Slasher as part of your natural progression as a cannon pilot. If you've rolled Minmatar, you'll get the Slasher as part of your tutorials. Now, there is no reason to ever upgrade to the Rifter. There is no reason to ever fly one of these. The Slasher is flat out better. And once you hit Tech 3, you have the Thrasher, which you can move into if you fancy more destroyer-sized ships. And once you hit Tech 4, you come back to the Slasher 2. The Rifter literally has no place in EVE Echoes. Ultimately, let's discuss why that is first of all. Well, if we look at the statistics page for the Rifter, you can see it's got two high slots and three mid slots. No low slots whatsoever, so already it's a little bit different to the Slasher. The Slasher has two high slots, two lows, and one mid. That mid gives the Slasher a lot of versatility. It can have a Nosferatu, it can have a Neutralizer, heck, it can even have a Warp Disruptor if you want. The Rifter gets no such options. What it does get is an additional low slot, which means you can have a little bit of extra tank to it if you want, but if you're going to put in something like two shield boosters there to really try and make it survivable, it doesn't have the capacity to support that, and you can't fit a Nosferatu to help support that either, so it's kind of pointless there. All it does mean is that you can fit a gyro stabilizer, but as you'll see in a second, that doesn't really fix much. If you look at the skill bonuses here for the Rifter, Frigate Command bonus as the Slasher has. Now the Slasher gets a plus 5% increase to small cannon damage and a plus 5% increase to small cannon tracking speed. What the Rifter gets as an upgrade, I suppose in inverted commas, is small cannon damage and small cannon accuracy fall off. The accuracy fall off and the tracking ultimately means nothing with either of these ships as they're going to be up close and personal and able to be hitting from that short range of the auto cannons. Anyway, strike cannons aren't actually able to fit on these. If you try to put two strike cannons on here, your power grid just flat out says no unless you've got a lot in frigate engineering. So ultimately, you're stuck with auto cannons, and the auto cannons don't care about that small accuracy fall off. They do care about that tracking speed, though. And the small cannon damage is the same on the Slasher as it is on the Rifter. You're not upgrading your damage by moving into the Rifter. Now, the only difference below is that it has an overall defense of slightly higher at 1198, rather than I think it's about 900 for the Slasher. Okay, so it's about 200 extra defense. That sounds really cool until you realize that the, the Rifter is a lot slower moving. That flight velocity of 438 means that it actually gets hit a lot more. That me Getting hit a lot more means that the, the small amount of extra health doesn't actually make up for that. You're better off sticking with the Slasher and going speed tanking with an Afterburner. The Rifter is just simply not as good as that. So why on earth would you ever go across to the Rifter is my question. And that's kind of the point I'm getting at here. This is one of the few ships in the game that literally has no place. And for one of the most iconic hulls in New Eden, to me that's a problem. Now on top of this as well, there is, as I've mentioned in the ship tree here, there is a notable lack of cannon options from Tech 4 upwards. Once you're, if you're going with frigates, you literally have the Tech 2 frigates of the Slasher and the Rifter, and at Tech 4 you get the Slasher 2. Tech 5 is then uh, the Probe and the uh, and the Burst, not uh, Cannon Frigates. Tech 6 doesn't have any Cannon Frigates either, as it's the Burst 2 and the Hound. Tech Level 7 doesn't have any Cannon Frigates either, as it is now the Breacher Assault. Now the question I have to ask here is at Tech Level 3, you have the Probe, which is not a Combat Frigate, it's an Exploration Frigate, which we've covered elsewhere, but then we have the Breacher. Now the Breacher is a Missile Frigate. Now, 
Don't we already have a tech level 3 missile frigate? Yes we do, it's the Kestrel, and the Kestrel is, ultimately, a lot more useful than the Breacher. My argument, therefore, is why not make the Breacher down to tech level 2, where it fills that slot there and gives you the option as a Minmatar pilot of whether you go for uh, missiles or railguns early on, which is exactly the kind of uh, option that you get as a Kaldari pilot early on. You can go with things that are missiles, like the Kestrel, or you can stick around with things like the Condor, the Condor 2, and the Cormorant, which are railguns. Minmatar don't get that option, really. Instead, I think the Rifter should have been moved up to tech level 3, and the Rifter should have two high slots, one mid slot, two low slots, and a little bit of the extra skills here. It should get a bonus for Frigate Command. As we see here, the 5% extra damage is fi I'm fine with, and the small accuracy falloff I'm fine with, but I'd love to see it get something for small cannon operation too, to really give the game a tech level 3 cannon frigate that is otherwise sorely missing. You're otherwise forced to go into the Thrasher or wait until the Slasher 2. And again, from the Slasher 2, you're either forced to go with the Thrasher line or wait until tech level 8 or a Faction Frigate for your next cannon ship, which to me really stings. As a small cannon pilot, it means I'm stuck with the Thrasher 2, uh, uh, sorry, a, th a Slasher 2 and the Thrasher line of ships. There's nothing in between until I hit tech level 8, and to me that's kind of a problem. And there we have it, everything that you need to know about getting started with cannons. Now, don't let my little rifter section there put you off. Cannons are by far my favourite weapon system in Eve Echoes with a good reason. They're versatile. In PvP, they can do a lot of damage very quickly. You can get up close and personal and they have some of the best speed tanks in the entire game, looking at Eudramiel and uh, Slasher 2. From there as well, you get the really cool Thrasher line of ships. Now, Thrashers, as I said, I've waxed lyrical in an entire video dedicated to those ships. In fact, I think I've done about four or five videos dedicated to those ships right about now. They're great for brawling, they're great for sort of scram kiting and skirmishing, keeping a bit of range. You can almost even uh, kite with them. And in fact, once you start getting up to the medium strike cannons, yeah, kiting suddenly becomes a thing as well. Cannons are ludicrously versatile. They don't get shut down uh, by energy neutralizers like some of the other weapon systems do, and they're great for speed tanking. I wholeheartedly recommend giving them a try, and hopefully this video has inspired some of you to do just that. If you're a cannon pilot, let me know in the comment section down below. I'd love to hear your thoughts, your opinions, and what your favorite ships are, what you're using, and what you're having successes with. Of course, as well, let me know your thoughts about the Rifter. I don't just want to wax lyrical myself. I want to know what you guys think, if you agree with me, if you disagree. Is there something I'm missing with the Rifter that you guys have gone, actually, you know what, this is a really cool ship, and here's why? I would love to know. I want to be flying a Rifter more in Eve Echoes. I am actually going to be taking it out and really putting it through its paces over the next couple of days. Otherwise, folks, if you've got a topic you want me to cover, let me know in the comment section down below. If you want to come and join the Catskull Cartel, you can do so by finding our Discord in the details down below and making an application there. Otherwise, folks, happy sailing and see you in New Eden!